You are listening to the Independent Dealer Podcast with hosts Luke Godwin and Jeff Watson. Hello and welcome to the Independent Dealer Podcast brought to you by Buckeye Dealership Consulting. Today, Luke, another awesome, awesome doom and gloom episode. One of my favorite. We brought in Stephen Karsten here with SGC Accounting. He's going to tell us the top three ways that you are getting stolen from at your dealership right now, Luke. I, uh, Jeff, you, I don't know. Un, I don't understand why you always worried about how you're being stolen from it. Do you have something to tell us all? It sounds like uh, it's maybe some <laughs> sort of a self-manifesting uh, uh, thing. <laughs> Steven, uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell us uh, who you are, where you're from, what do you do? Hi, thanks, Jeff and Luke. Um, I'm Stephen Costins. I'm a partner with SGC Accounting. I head up the audit division. And uh, so, yeah, when fraud is discovered, it's usually my problem to deal with it. So That's awesome. And so I got introduced to you through a mutual friend of, that's in my 20 group. And they related to an experience to me that when they got, they had kind of a wild ride to get into their dealership, right? And, and some death and some kind of takeovers and this, that, and the other. And so I think they had a period of time in their dealership where no one was really watching. And they came to you guys and said, hey, we need to do some accountant work. Stephen, pick it up from there. What happened in this dealership and, and, and what did you find? Yeah. So, so unfortunately, the, the principal had passed away and his wife uh, took over the dealership and they had a general manager who they paid a lot of money to to sort of run it because uh, she wasn't experienced in dealership. And um, as is the case, um, unfortunately, most dealers don't get serious accounting work if they don't have to. And it was their bank who insisted that they uh, be audited. Mm -hmm. And so on my first visit for the audit, I, uh, I showed up there and, the, and I'd sent a list of stuff to prepare for the, general, for the general manager to get ready for us. And we showed up and one of the things that we do, and it's a, it's a very important uh, step is we recount the cash collected and we pick a random, we pick random days. We go run our own reports out of IDMS or Order Masters and, and we see how much cash was collected for the day. And then we get the, the deposit slips and the credit card reports and, and the bank statements. And we trace that money, making it all the way to the bank account. Mm. Um, honestly, once money is in the bank, you have a much lower chance of being stolen from. Mm. It's always intercepted before it makes it to the bank. Um, so we trace the money all the way through the bank account and, and see that it got there. And when I showed up, the general manager was like, oh, I've got those bank statements there, the, the, the deposit slips. Oh, I've all sorted it. You almost don't even have to do any work. <laughs> and the way he said it, I was like, okay, I'm doing twice as much work. Now. Oh my Second, god! The way the way he said it, I just I was like, I'm I'm doing twice as much work right now. And um, so we 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 start looking at things, and um, and you know it, the report said they collected ten thousand dollars, and ten thousand dollars was deposited into the bank account. Fine. But there was no real breakdown of cash and check and credit card and stuff like that. And so I reran some of my own reports to get the breakdown of cash and check and credit card. And then the deposit slips that they gave me were just a grand total with no detail. So I then got the bank statement and I got that tiny little picture of the deposit slip mm. that's on the back of the bank statement. I actually took a picture with my phone so I could zoom in on it. And on that is written the how much cash, how much check, how much money order. Well, FEA or IDMS was telling us they collected like $9,000 in cash. That deposit slip had $100 of cash deposited. Oh my God. And it had a $9,000 check deposited, which made the totals the same. But, you know, somehow they had taken 9,000 in cash and turned it into, you know, a hundred dollars in cash and 8,900 in check. Hmm. So, so, and as soon as I saw that, I mean, you yeah, know, it shouldn't be substituted for cash. I mean, cash is cash, check is check. It shouldn't be substituted. That's when I told the owner right away. I, I didn't get, I mean, I didn't know yet, but I knew something was not right. Um, that's when I told the owner and we actually contacted the banker and we actually got copies of the check 
that made up that, the, that was substituted for the cash, it was a check from their own CPI company. And his scam was this. Oh my gosh. Mm. He, oh my could gosh. Call in C, he could call in CPI claims on anybody he wanted. So, and nobody checks that stuff because it's your own money coming from your reinsurance back to your dealership. Not, there's not too many safeguards. So he would just call in a CPI claim, get a check from the CPI company. No one at the dealership is really, besides him, knows that that check is coming and it's not even necessarily a real CPI claim. Mm -hmm. And now he has a check made out to the dealership and he could then substitute it into the deposit, take out the same amount of cash. Oh my God. And, and deposit that deposit. And, and as long as all the totals match, no one was, yeah. was, was any the wiser. For sure. And, and, and so he was just calling. And then it was so funny because that lady separately had previously, she said, man, I never make any money in my reinsurance company. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, should, because, that, that should be a red flag right there. <laughs> that's because he quarter of a million dollars in six months. Whoa. Oh my gosh. He had pulled through that, through that scan. So he did uh, it through the reinsurance company. That's how he stole it. A lot the of it. There was, there was some other, he did similar things where like some old repos that everyone had forgotten about was sent to the auction and the check came in and no one was really oh, expecting man. that check and he could substitute that check in as well. But the majority of it was him calling in fake reinsurance claims and then substituting them into the deposit and, and pocketing the cash. Hey guys, real quick, uh, Buckeye Dealership Consulting. We talk about reinsurance companies and how every so often, if you have the wrong checks and balances, you could have a manager issuing a CPI check back to your <laughs> dealership or a service note, right? I mean, if you get a service yeah. check that comes in and you didn't expect it or you didn't account for it on your service income, they could swap it out for cash. For sure. You know, that's, uh, that's one of those things you have to have checks and balances. And, and one other thing, if, if somebody tells you your reinsurance company is not making money, <laughs> you need to check it because, you know, Jeff and I, we've talked about the, the really way, great way to build wealth in this, uh, in this industry is through reinsurance. And yep. uh, if your reinsurance isn't making money, from, probably somebody's stealing from you, right? Yep. Yep. And call the guys at Buckeye, get it set up, and then don't get stolen from. So again, almost all the fraud is that they intercept the cash before it makes it to the bank. Um, once it's in the bank, it's a heck of a lot harder to steal. Um, um, they need, they need accounting level access once it's in the bank, but, yeah. but almost all the frauds are intercepting the so, cash before it hits the bank. So for, for owners out there who are, are somewhat, uh, financial savvy, um, I go back and do all my reconciliations, um, undeposited funds, things like this. Should I also pick one random day? And, and look at the deposit like you did. But is that, is that the way to prevent this? Yeah, I'd, I'd do a week because, you, you know, okay. he, they may, there may be a day on, a day off. He, he, might not have a, a, he might not have a CPI check to substitute every day. Mm. So I'd do it as a week, at least a week. Okay. Um, but yes, it's incredibly important that you double check the breakdown of cash, check, credit card, money order. Those are... Um, because if they if they get a, if they find a way to substitute in a check, yeah, the totals will match. And too many owners just double check the totals. Yeah, and and um, um, so focus on the breakdown of cash and check. Um, uh, so, anyways, yeah, focus yeah. on the breakdown of cash and check. That's where they're going to intercept because they know you're going to look at the total. Yeah. What I also found too is you need to go pull your own reports, like you said. Correct. Because they could pull a report for the day, but it ended at, you know, five minutes before closing. Everything balanced, it was fine. And then right at closing, someone brings in a three or four or five hundred dollar payment or does some sort of cash transaction after the report was pulled. And if they don't expect you to go back and repull that report, it could just disappear and be gone. That is correct. There was a slightly a sillier fraud where a lady, her bonus was based on collections. She would run a bunch of fake credit card payments on the Friday, <laughs> run the collections report, void them on the same day, but turn in her collections report for her, her commission. I mean, it's, that's silly, because that's the kind of stuff that will get caught soon enough. I mean, that's just, that's yeah, just short-term short stupidity. But again, you are correct. 
once a day yeah. closes, the DMSs pretty much lock those kind of reports for the day. Yeah. So run them, always run them the day after because those reports are then effectively locked for the day and, and you can't really make previous day changes and stuff like that in most DMSs. So, so you know, run them the morning after, not the evening of. Mm. So, so that, is, that is a very interesting tale of, of keeping your eye on your CPI on your reinsurance company. Um, warranty, whatever, because those checks do come in, and, and yep. you know, you know, I see those checks coming in. Is there a way? Um, and, and with this same example, we were talking about a guy stealing cash. Can it happen where possibly checks come in, and the same thing happened here where they could steal the checks, or, or they're, is that they're not, not going to steal the checks? They, um, okay. they would have to endorse them over to themselves. Yeah, and, and that that's, and there's that, a paper trail yes thank you and that i mean that's fbi territory when you start doing that kind of stuff so okay. so they 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 want the cash they want yeah. that immediate gratification they want the cash they're not gonna now they need to go find a a, 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 um, a friendly banker that they can talk into yeah. cashing a bunch of checks that are all endorsed over to him from <laughs> yeah. random people they're, they're not gonna mess with the checks um they are they're going to find a way to substitute the, something into the deposit to take the cash. Mm. So there was another dealer also in Houston and his owner, it was a JD buy rider. His owner was very active in the dealership and really had that place on lock. And he thought he had everything sorted out and the deposit had to, yeah, you had to bring the deposit slip to him after the bank run and he hand checked it. And, and he also got stolen from and and this, the, the, but this was a similar scheme, but, but different. What the, their accountant figured out is he, he accidentally once overpaid the state in sales tax. And then the state sent a refund check for the overpayment. Well, the owner has everything so locked down that the accountant can't write his own checks. Can't. So what he did is he just started intentionally overpaying the sales tax on every deal. <laughs> mm. And the state starts to send back $200, $300, $400 $400 refund checks for the difference. Now he has all these checks he can substitute into the deposit, take the cash. And then he always turned in just the total deposit to the owner and the owner always checked the total deposit. Again, not focusing on the breakdown. And so that was his loophole to, he, they didn't have, I don't believe they ran reinsurance. So he had to find a way to get checks that he could substitute in. Yeah. So he figured if he just, he accidentally figured out if you overpay the state, they're going to send you a refund check. So, so he intentionally overpaid every sales tax, got all these refund checks and, and, and switched them into the that, deposit. And honestly, that could happen with any uh, vendor, right? Yeah. Even you yeah. could, if you're not the one writing the checks, this could go on. Um, that's it. That's interesting. I, I'm sure that happens. Well, and it's often. not, the owner was the one who signed the checks, but you, he ah. wasn't doing a good enough job checking the matching invoice or checking yeah. what the amounts were. And so we highly recommend owners sign their own checks and that the invoice be attached to the check at the time of signing. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome, but if you you know, as long as you aren't too big of a dealership, then, then that's the way to do it. That way, you know, and what you're signing matches with the, with the paperwork. Let's, um, let's talk about that real quick, because I used to do that, Stephen. Yep. And what I, what I found is vendors sometimes are so pushy to get checks and I'm not yes. always in the office yes. that they, that created a problem. Uh, how do you recommend getting past that? And, and what are some recommendations on, on us being able to do that? I mean, honestly, uh, it, a lot of people complain about that, but it's one of those things. If your policy is we write checks on Friday, then you write checks on Friday and everybody knows mm. on Friday they can get their check. I mean, it, you, if you don't set a policy, then they're going to, you know, these, these, the, the vendors will try and get their check early and try and, you know, but you, if you're, if you have a policy, if you're consistent with your policy, if they know they get their check Friday and they get their check every Friday, those are kind of things you can, you can, you can work through. And, 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 and you know, sometimes some of the vendors are little mechanic shops and they, they're yeah. going to complain and they're not going to want their check on Friday and hell, sometimes they want cash, you know, but if you become a, if you're a large enough dealer, if you're a sophisticated enough dealer, you just get to the point where 
checks are written on Friday and it is what it is. We, you know, um, when you're a small mom and pop, you're going to deal with a lot of other small mom and pops as well. And those kind of things happen and, and we discourage it, but they just come, you eventually you just become of a decent enough size where checks yeah. are written on Friday. We can't, so, we can't onesies and twosies a check every time someone walks into the office, <laughs> you never get anything done. Uh, yeah, that's you're the story right. of my life, unfortunately, but th- th- it sounds like the cash swap is kind of the number one thing you're seeing, Easily. you know, whether Easily. do you, do you see dealers that go cashless as a good solution where they just say, Hey, we don't accept cash for payments or down payments, or maybe they go get one of those little kiosks that take the cash for them. Um, is that the way to go? Just stop dealing in cash. So 10 years ago, many of the largest dealers around went cashless many of them have reverted back oh, in some form. Interesting. You know, when you're, when the, when the, when the, every customer now has to stop and get a money order and pay five bucks for a money order. And it's, 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 it's hard. Yeah. It's mm. hard. It is yeah. hard. So many, many do, many, many of those dealers have reverted back to the, to, they do have kiosks. Mm. Well, what, um, what we saw is when we, uh, you know, years ago that our amount of cash we took went way down, but now it has gone back up. And when we started charging convenience, well, when our processor started charging convenience fees, our cash payments started climbing again. Um, hmm. And I and I guess that's that's a kind of expected, huh? Yeah, expected. So, and I think, um, yeah, I mean that's a pushback, but. I would rather have the cash because I can deposit the cash pretty easy. <laughs> and, and like Luke said, if he's got the processes in place, it's not something to be scared of, right? You've got, you're doing it right to make sure that these things can't happen or to, to, to prevent against them. You don't need to be scared of it. Yeah, but it's also one of those things, you know, in the fraud triangle, it's it, the tempt- you've left the temptation open, regardless of how, what oh, your yeah. procedures are yeah. by having the cash floating around. Mm. that is you you know you've left one of the you know one of the corners of the fraud triangle open the temptation is right there so kiosks are quite popular and and they're great and the nice thing about them is the second the money hits the bank it's technically brinks's legal responsibility so if someone breaks into the office and drags that machine off it is not your responsibility Mm. yeah They, they legally they take ownership the second the money hits the machine um and they deposit the money to your account the same day even before they've counted the machine Mm-hmm. So, so, I mean, it, you know, it's, it is two grand a month, but, um, it might be worth it. Yeah. It might be yeah. worth it. I mean, you know, just the amount of time spent. I mean, I, I, I see people in their office counting cash for two, three hours a day with their door locked. You know, what is that time worth? Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, in salary, you know, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, so, so they definitely there is a point where enough cash is handled where that machine just simply is a no-brainer and and again do you really want your employees making that bank deposit and carrying the cash and and always and, having to go yeah always having to go and, and do you hold it in the, in the safe. safe for multiple days yeah. and 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 at some point there is enough cash where simply it's it's totally worth it the liability probably, is, is probably 15 15 years ago um we used to have a safe in the dealership 15 years ago, one Friday night, they broke in and stole the damn safe, took the whole thing out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, you know, it's one of those things. What do you, you know, and I don't even, at that point, our cash um, reconciliation wasn't very good. So I don't have a clue how much was stolen in that process. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's another one of those. Yeah. Uh, so Steven, tell so us this. What's, have, what's number two? Let's, we, we got a limited time with you. We don't want to take up sure. your whole day, but tell us what, what is the second way that dealers are getting stolen from? Uh, petty cash and reimbursements. Um, oh. it, it, and it's, there was a large fraud recently uncovered in a Texas dealer where, um, and he, he, uh, he's been a dealer over 50 years between him and his dad. And they are one of the largest operators. We we uncovered a, a scheme where, unfortunately, storage lots pretty much always want cash to get your car out of out of storage. Yep. And so they maintain a petty cash, and then the 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 the, the collections manager turns in a you know a petty cash request to get a car out of storage, and then a, a, you know the repo guy go gets it's out of storage, and then they turn back in the the invoice from the from the storage lot. Um, one of my business partner, he's also an audit uh, partner here at the, at the firm. 
he was looking at some of the, the towing receipts and some of the impound receipts and noticed the numbers didn't add up on the, um, on the breakdown and, and then really started looking at it hard. And then we started to realize it looked like the VIN had been photocopied over, uh, you know, it was a, it was, it's a copy of a scan of a, yeah. you know, and, and, and we're looking hard enough. We started to realize the VIN had been, looked like it had been pasted over something else. True as Bob, mm. she was making uh, storage lot invoices um, mm. um, and turning them in for, for the petty cash. And, and that was her support for the petty cash that she was taking. And, and it, uh, you know, it, in just a few months, it was $25,000. Oh, wow. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, they're a big dealer. So, they, you know, it's $400 every time you do a storage. So, At so least, yeah. you know, so, so um, yeah, uh, uh, um, yeah, she was pasting um, invoices together. Um, um, and, and it's not sophisticated, but again, it's one of those things where you think you have all the good procedures, you know, you put in yeah. a request you know they and, match, then you, and then you checking. bring back the invoice and it all matches up and the change and everything like that and and they just made up the paperwork so so um and she's the collections manager so who's go, whoever who's the one who then has to charge the customer's account for that repo it's her so she just doesn't you know it, there's no there's no you know the paper they, there's a kink in the paper trail you you really need also a, a, a final check that that find that charge actually was charged to the customer's account because if you start charging people's well, accounts It'll come and, out in the wash. Yeah, and inside of uh, IBMS is contract AR clearing. So, uh, so you should be able to go to that on your balance sheet and see that, right? And if it doesn't add up, it doesn't add up. Uh, many dealers have no form of integration between their DM. Most dealers do not have integration uh, turned on. Um, uh, uh, they do not. So, so IDMS is standalone from the QuickBooks effectively. So, so that that just comes down. Uh, um, and again, if you don't put it in IDMS in the first place, it's never going to hit the books in the second place. So, so you know, she's the one. She just never charged those charges to any any. She was just charging them to repo expenses or whatever, and they were yeah, just yeah, it just yeah. exactly, it just disappears into the into the the minutia. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. You put that to repo expense, no oh. one's going to look at it twice. How do we prevent yeah. something like that, Stephen? Are we auditing random invoices? Or are we? It, yes, but you just have to be aware. I mean, once you, you know, just getting a piece of paper is not enough. You got to, you know, you, you, and your people have to be, have to look over those numbers. It's so easy to get into a routine and just blank over a piece of paper or just go straight to the total. You know, you just have to be cognizant. Well, every of, so often question you, the specifics. You, some of the details. This is, this is what I do. And, and Stephen, you might this might be right or wrong, I'm not sure, but whenever I do my 20 group numbers every month, I, I look at every line of my expenses yeah. and I go, okay, well that, why is this there? And I'll dig into it and I'll go and ask comptroller, what is this about? And then she produces the bill says, well, this is what it is. And I look at the bill and expect it. I guess that's the only way to prevent something like that. Not that that will prevent it hundred percent of the time either, right? That will help with some of the larger items. Mm. that is a good way to catch larger uh, fluctuations and that small stuff you're yeah. never gonna you know yeah. 500 bucks here or there but is it the know. is it the process of just asking you know is it the process of just knowing that they know you're looking yes. and you're asking hey what is this and i know what it is i can tell I, I figured it out but they know that i'm asking correct so we actually wrote an article to our clients where we we told them to implement a fraud system where I don't even care whether it's effective. Just the fact that you pretend like you have a fraud system and you, you question <laughs> some of the bills and you audit some of the stuff, regardless of whether you're, you're doing it wholeheartedly or, or doing it right, just the fact that you, it looks like yeah. you might be checking things and going through things and randomly checking things, that goes a long way. That's yeah. people, people's For mentality. Sure. You know, it's, they have yeah. to think that they can get away with it before they will do something. Well, yeah, it's like and your so, kids. If you're not looking, they're going to freaking rob your pantry what blind, it is. right? And eat that's it all. what it is. So, <laughs> um, um, you know, so, um, you know, just, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Checking random bills, comparing your expenses, randomly picking a week of deposit, rotating employees. That's a big one. Someone, when someone else rotates into a position for a week, when someone's on vacation or whatever, mm. and they look at it and they're like, hey, how, what, what are you doing here? I mean, it's I those kind you, of things. things that, works. 
that works so well, Stephen. I'm glad you brought that up because what I find myself doing is whenever we have an employee that's on a week on a, on a vacation for a week, I usually work their job. Yeah, and yep. you find out all kind of stuff that goes on yep. that you're like, well, why did that happen? Why? Yeah. Oh, you're not you're not making those phone calls. You're not doing that. That's something yep. I think that every uh, owner should should do if you are able to do that. Uh, agreed. Agreed. You know, and a, a client of mine, he, when he was having problems in his, in his service center, he set up office in the service center for, for a month. And mm -hmm. you, you, the quickest way to figure things out is to be on the ground and just listening to the conversations and overhearing people talk. You'll, you'll pick up a lot of what's going on just through, just through conversations. Hey, y'all, real quick to interrupt, uh, pastime. Speaking of being stolen from, yep. don't let your cars get stolen. Put a pastime GPS in them. No matter if you're uh, buy here, pay here, your lease here, pay here, your uh, retail dealer pastime has a solution for you. And uh, we talked with Marshall last week about what they do on the retail side and how they actually can sell the product on the retail side and make extra money. So uh, pastime doesn't only protect your products. They also uh, can make you money if you do it the right way, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, you can sell the service off when you, you know, as a retail customer, who doesn't want to have a GPS in the car that they just spent 50 or 60 grand on? Or, you that know? One you bought for, or that one you bought for your uh, your son who's driving it around. I don't yeah, like or your mistress. Maybe you uh -huh. want to keep track of it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do. But anyways, call the guys at Pastime and get set up. Steven, I mentioned to you that I thought the third one for you was going to be the service center and parts uh -huh. walking out the back door. And you said, no, 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 that's peanuts. That's peanuts. And it I was is. like, I, I go through about sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in parts every month, right? My, my bills, yep. my invoices to my yep. parts people. That seems like there's a lot of room in there. If someone could figure out some sort of a, a, a flim flam, some sort of a, a scheme, they could take a lot of money. They can, but we kind of know what cars are being worked on. We kind of, a lot of that stuff gets charged back to IDMS. We kind of, you know, it's make model specific. We oftentimes get an order zone per, per a bill per, per VIN number or per ticket. Yes, they can do it. Yes, they can put an extra water pump on and take it out the back door. Is it going to be significant? It's not as much as you probably think. Um, um, they, you know, I mean, most times the mechanic doesn't get to order whatever he wants. He, a lot of times he wants to fix certain things. Then the service manager says, nah, you can fix these things because we got to control recon. And so there's, you know, there are already multiple eyes looking at what's about to be ordered for that vehicle. You know, the mechanic wants to fix six things. The service manager says he can fix four things. And, and you know, and then he, he can order, he orders those four things. And you would have, you know, it would have to be a very small dealership where the mechanic is the guy ordering the parts and is the guy making the final decision. And, and if it is a really small dealership, how much can he really take off the top without, you know, they're only, if they're only fixing 10 cars a month, there's only so much he can, he could possibly take off the top. So, you know, the bigger you are and the more parts you order, the more probably sets of eyes you have looking at the car and the mechanic doesn't get to make the final decision. The service manager does. And, and, and oftentimes then you have a parts guy doing the ordering. So, so, and it's make model specific or the parts are make model specific. So the, the mechanic would have to have a, you know, a 2010 Chrysler minivan at home that he's trying to fix. And he would have to get a 2010 Chrysler minivan over here to get the part he needs for his home car. It's not as bad as you think. I, I, um, hmm. um, cash is, um, and you know, and used parts are, you know, and, and used parts on Craigslist are worth, you know, they're probably worth 50 cents on the dollar. You know, cash is king. They're going to, if there's an access to cash, cash is what they'll steal first. Yeah. Uh, I've heard, I've heard of, you know, <laughs> that situation where, you know, technicians were, we're working on cars at, at their house and ordering parts and doing it that way. But again, you know, what are you talking about? A couple hundred bucks a week, maybe at most. I mean, it does add up, but, but it does. Yeah. But, but you know, they, you know, at some point, you know, it's what it's, it's all effectively almost a cost of doing business because how many layers of service managers on top of general managers on top, are you going to have sign off on the same service ticket before you, yeah. You know, you're going you're gonna to spend 200 grand to save 20 grand, you know, at, <laughs> at some, you know, it, it, no, I mean, in this business, you, 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 you stop the easy stuff and, and there's going to be a certain level of, you know, I mean, we, we have salesmen who get 
who get bigger commissions from the the, the 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 dealership next door than they do at their own place, and they intentionally send send customers to the dealership next door because they make more money from the. There's lots of schemes and mm. and people selling out of lane, selling cars out of lane and getting kickbacks. Um, um, you know, there's always a certain yeah. level of some form of fraud, but um, you know, we we want to make them work for it. Don't make it easy, mm. and and keep it you know relatively t minor where it it effectively becomes uh, you know and i hate to say it effectively becomes a, just a cost of business in this industry this industry has always been kind of backhand deals and and you know there's always been sort of a little bit of of that's what drew luke into it in the beginning actually <laughs> that's why i got into it is because he knew there was a lot of cash he could hide um, so to wrap this up, Stephen, it, does it come down to your people? I mean, is that is that any kind of like fail safe or thing like just hire people with integrity, vet them through integrity? I don't know, test them, check on them and just be quick to fire when you find someone who is OK with a white lie, because if they're OK with a white lie to a customer or to you. They're okay doing a lot of other stuff. They, it is. But uh, and, but honestly, at the end of the day, you're it's all. Nine times out of ten, the person stealing is the person that you would have sworn is the 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 most honest, yeah, church going, com, you know, uh, mm. community person in the whole dealership. Um, just you know, but in in hindsight, there's always warning signs. You know, you know, I remember the accountant had the nicest car on the whole. You know, the the controller was driving the nicest car on the whole. Lot. <laughs> like, how do you afford Better that? Better than the I know what you get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's you know, I swear to God, we do look, we do look at what the cars people drive when we walk in on an order. That's funny. Okay, I'm not joking. Um, um, it is a sign of of people maybe living belong beyond their means. Yeah. Um, um, you know, and, and if, if people are having money problems or are living beyond their means, have yeah. family issues, Asking those for that contribute advances. that contributes to the potential for fraud. So keep an eye on on that. The, the um, another just the final item that we of fraud is, that very common is referrals. Multiple okay. large frauds related to referrals um a quarter of a million dollars in one dealership purely through referral checks wow yep they they and they because they they their policy they would give out referrals in cash oh and, and then they would substitute a referral like a slip mm -hmm. well the slips were all were all fake effectively yeah bob and the, susan and the, john frank that's what it was and eventually the the, the man the owner just had and they used to boast about how amazing their referrals were and, and it was crazy 90 I mean, percent of our sales are referrals that's what it is and then and then it, he just happened to be in the controller's office and saw some referral slips and was like hang on we're having a down week we haven't even sold the car this week yet and oh got God. there's three there's three referral slips on uh. her desk once oh, so these weren't even sales that were happening. These were just blatant. That's right. That's right. Blank went, referral it, sheets. It went back seven years. Wow. Um, um, you know, and 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 again, it's it's two fifty at a time, but it adds up. Um, you know, and then another client, they used to they would write their referral checks and send them to the dealership. The accounting office would write them and then send them to the dealership for the customers to pick up. Well, one account, one of the smart accounting ladies noticed that all their referral checks were cashed on the same Saturday at the same bank, all at the same time. Oh my goodness! Turned out that the one of the salesmen, their wife, worked at the bank, and he, all those referral checks, he oh just took them all at the same time, and she cashed them for him, and and so now the customer actually has to go to the accounting office in person. To pick up their their referral checks, they can't just they don't just send them off to the dealership. Um, so, and again, you would never think that a referral check made out to the right person would. Yeah. You know, you just you you think that's pretty good controls. Well, you know, I mean, if you know the right people, if you have the right, uh, you know, it it happens. Yeah. And then, um, um, so I think I think I'll end with one more funny story. Okay. We had a client, a large client with they have seventy dealerships in uh, four or five states in the center of the United States. Their dealership started to get robbed at gunpoint 
Um, <laughs> always the morning that they, they would do bank deposits like twice a week. Uh, always the morning of the bank deposit, their dealership started to get robbed at, at gunpoint. And I mean, they had five or six dealerships robbed at gunpoint minutes before the bank deposit was to be taken to the bank. And it, you know, they were suspicious, but had no idea what's going on. I mean, they have 70 dealerships, so they have a ton of employees and they just didn't know what was going on. Accounting got one of, one of the manager's um, credit cards when he turned in his credit cards. And he works in a different state. He is a sign, he's a manager at a store in a different state. All his he was always filling up with gas in the what he always happened to fill up with gas in the state and the town that was being robbed the day oh of gosh. the robbery. Oh my goodness. And accounting oh noticed, like, why is this guy from Ohio filling up in Indiana? You know, on the not, same day we got robbed. And then they realized <laughs> it's the same day that they got robbed. And then they realized, and then they also oh got it. God. They actually got his phone records and they confirmed his phone was in oh the goodness. town being robbed. His company <laughs> phone was in the town. Company being phone on company gas card. Uh, robbing the well, company. Robbing the company. And it was, oh you know, and again, it was the getaway account. car had a dealer plate on it. <laughs> well, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't quite that bad. But again, oh and, you know, accounting, not just blanket signing the credit card statement, looking at the credit card statement, yeah. realized, wow. hey, why is this guy filling up in Indiana? He's assigned to Ohio. My and, gosh. and they put two and two together. So Sounds like an example of when a policy can actually backfire on you. Like, well, we make deposits every Friday morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay, now everybody knows. Yeah. That's when you're heavy. And, unfo you know, unfortunately, it's... it's um, you know, and unfortunately, almost every story, every story I told you, it's an employee. So, mm, so yeah, yeah. If you're part, you know, and if you, you know, that so is, I, I think, I think to wrap this up and to talk about, you know, it's trust, but verify, right? Hundred percent. Every time. Reagan. Yeah. Every yeah. Time. It's Reagan. It's Reagan. Uh, yeah. You know, trust, but verify. And, Steven, remem and, and remember that if I catch it, it's already 18 months too late mm. because by the time I audit, which might be the summer of the following year, you know, it, it's 18 Owners. months. They, it, they can get so much yeah. stolen in 18 months. And the other thing is, specifically on my audit engagement letter, it says the audit is not designed to detect fraud. You cannot rely on your accountant to detect fraud. We, we work with materiality limits that might be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, yeah. and we're looking at the big picture, not the little, not the little detail. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at it every day on the ground as it's happening. That's the way to catch it. Because if it gets, if, it, if I catch it, it's already in the hundreds of thousands of dollars at that point. And <laughs> yeah. dealers, Good luck. Dealers, dealers have to be involved. You can't yeah, every day. Yes. You, you can't sit on the sideline. I every think day. that's the more, moral of this story is trust, but verify dealers have to be on the ground and, yep. mm. and, and check, you know, have yeah. your own internal checklist and get it done. Steven, thank you for your time. How do people connect with you if they want to learn more or talk to you or, or have one of those fun audits? Yeah, uh, uh, they can go to our website, uh, www.sgcaccounting.com or they can email me at stevenc at sgcaccounting.com. Thanks, Thanks Stephen. Hey, next time we're going to talk about how dealers steal from themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Good All right, cheers, guys. Dealers Helping Dealers. Please leave us a review and subscribe. The Independent Dealer Podcast.